Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and the Mac Studio is also here and this is Apple's most powerful Apple Silicon computer yet with a starting price of $2,000 which puts it right in the buying price range of someone who was previously looking at a big desktop computer like the 27 inch iMac and it also comes in at the same exact starting price as Apple's 14 inch MacBook Pro and with multiple configurations and a wide price range of $2,000 to $8,000 I thought it would be helpful to try to put together a buyer's guide video considering you can literally go on Apple's website right now and order one of these today. And like I usually do with these pre-buyer's guide videos, full disclosure, I do not have a Mac Studio to review yet and I am really just putting this video up to try and address all of the comments I received on my last video about the Mac Studio to try to give you the best buying advice I can give you with the current information I have. and not spend all my time writing those comments out individually to anyone who asks. So this is the video to watch if you want my advice on this computer right now. All right, a quick refresher. What is the Mac Studio? Well, the Mac Studio is Apple's new desktop, which is in between a Mac mini and an iMac and, and then the uh, high-end Mac Pro. It's a type of desktop, quite frankly, we haven't seen Apple make in quite some time, which I think the closest kind of comparison you can draw to it is the G4 Cube and maybe the 2013 Mac Pro. And while it's still expensive, it bridges a gap between consumer, prosumer, and pro, making this a really attractive option for a lot of Mac users. The Mac Studio is enclosed in a square, almost cubish type of design that looks like a bigger, fatter version of the Mac Mini, and it comes with plenty of ports, with four Thunderbolt ports on the back, two USB-A ports, a 10 gigabit ethernet port, an HDMI port, and on the front, it actually features two additional Thunderbolt ports and an SD card slot. Now, one important thing to note here is that the two ports on the front are only Thunderbolt speeds at 40 gigabits per second if you get the model with the M1 Ultra chip. If you opt for the M1 Max model, these ports are regular USB-C ports and they have a maximum speed of 10 gigabits per second. So that's just something to note there. All right, now let's go over some of the configurations you can buy because while I think a lot of people will walk away disappointed by the pricing of this computer, I actually think for those that need this type of machine, the configurations here are actually a pretty good value, especially the starting one, because the starting config, which I think will be pretty popular, comes with an M1 Max chip as standard and 32 gigabytes of unified memory as standard with a 512 gigabyte SSD. Now, when I say this is a good value, you have to consider what this machine is doing against other Macs. Take Apple's popular 14 inch MacBook Pro. If you were to get the same specs, you would be paying $900 more for the same performance. So if you don't need the portability of a laptop, but need to maximize on performance, the Mac Studio should be the first Mac desktop you are looking at. And this thing's even more powerful than an Intel Mac Pro, which we'll talk about later. Of course, that's just the start of the Mac Studio configurations and both the Max and Ultra chip have an additional configuration. For the Max version, you can spend $200 more on a more powerful 32 core GPU. Now, one thing to note here is that if you don't need the best GPU, the CPU specs on both of these M1 Max chips is exactly the same with the same 10 core CPU. So only upgrade this part if you actually really use your GPU. Uh, some examples of that would be for rendering out video or using intensive 3D modeling applications or other programs like that. Or hey, maybe you wanna play a few Mac games. There's a few out there. That's when you'd wanna go for a higher end GPU. If that doesn't sound like you, just stick with the base chip. Now we'll get to the Ultra in just a second, but there's other options on the Max model I want to go over for your consideration. So for memory, you can spend an additional $400 for 64 gigabytes of unified memory. This is a worthwhile consideration to make if you like to have a lot of high memory intensive apps open at once, or if you are running into memory issues on your current computer, and especially if you already have a computer with 32 gigabytes of RAM or memory and you're reaching that limit, you get those memory uh, warnings that you're out of memory, get the 64 gigabyte model because I think this is the type of computer that you want to last for at least the next five years. Storage is also something to consider here. 512 gigabytes of starting storage is fine, uh, but honestly in 2022 with the pro audience this is aimed at, I would probably make the recommendation of getting more storage. 
As for how much you need, that's kind of a personal question. You kind of need to figure out on your own, but I look at how much you're using on your current computer and then possibly doubling that storage to ensure, again, that this computer ages gracefully. I think the additional $200 for the one terabyte drive is a good option for most people. I, I think I'd recommend most people to spend the extra $200, get double the storage, you'll have a lot more room to grow there than with 512 gigabytes, which it just seems a little bit limited for what this computer is. Another thing to consider is the storage speed. Now, while all of these SSDs will be really, really fast, I should warn you that if this is like the MacBook Pro, for the fastest storage that runs at the full advertised 7.4 gigabytes per second speed, you will need to opt for the four or eight terabyte option. On any of the other lower drives, it's probably going to run a little bit slower. There's no benchmarks out on that yet, but that's how it is on the MacBook Pro. I imagine it's going to be the same exact way for this Mac Studio. Now, if you're looking at these storage options and thinking they're a little too expensive, you're kind of right. I mean, getting eight terabytes will net you an additional $2,400 on your Mac Studio. And that's literally $400 more than just buying another base model Mac Studio. Another bit of buying advice I would give you is that don't forget that this is a desktop computer with a lot of fast ports on this device. Meaning that because it's a stationary desktop, it's very easy to buy a lot of cheap external storage for this device and just keep that plugged in. Just keep in mind, most external storage options won't be as fast as the internal drive, but if you need a lot of storage and aren't really concerned about the speed, that is a good way to go and you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of options expanding external storage and with modern day storage prices, that can actually be really inexpensive. All right, let's address the elephant in the room, the M1 Ultra. So this is Apple's most powerful chip yet, which basically combines two M1 Max chips together. And as a result, the Max chip specs for everything on the M1 Ultra are doubled. So taking a look at the base M1 Ultra chip, you're looking at a $1,400 increase in price. And that it's actually an $1,800 increase because the M1 Ultra starts with 64 gigabytes of memory instead of 32, and you cannot select a lower 32 gigabyte option. But with that costly increase, at least on paper, it looks like you're getting some serious power increase because the CPU on that machine is double from the 10 core design of the M1 Max, so it gets a whopping 20 core CPU design. While this sounds expensive at first at $3,799, I would remind you that putting this against a similarly specced Mac Pro at 16 cores, four cores less than this machine, would run you eight thousand dollars yes eight thousand dollars for a 16 core mac pro and a 24 core mac pro would be twelve thousand dollars it's also important to keep this perspective so you realize just how impressive the performance is on the mac studio especially when apple gives a lot of examples of the mac studio beating even the 28 mac Pro in performance, and a recent leak from a Geekbench benchmark shows that the M1 Ultra chip is not only faster in single core performance than the Mac Pro, but it beats it out in multi-core performance with its 20 core CPU design. With 21% faster performance, a $3,700 Mac Studio destroying a $13,000 Mac Pro. That's what I mean when I talk about value. I honestly feel sorry for anyone who bought a Mac Pro a few years ago. The M1 Ultra also has a more powerful GPU. The starting chip is a bin chip though, and it has 48 GPU cores and not the full 64 GPU core version. The 64 GPU core version will cost you an additional $1,000. I think that's a hefty price increase for the performance here, especially considering the CPU core count is exactly the same. So again, only go for this option if your workloads are heavily, heavily, heavily GPU dependent. And for reference, Apple claims the 64 core GPU is at the same performance as a NVIDIA 3090 with 200 watts of less power consumption, which if that's true, that's kind of crazy. Another thing I discovered is that the M1 Ultra Max Studio weighs 7.9 pounds, which is two pounds heavier than the M1 Max version. I'm guessing that has something to do with the thermals, like a bigger heat sink or heat pipe, just kind of like the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip weighs a little bit more than the M1 Pro version, but 
an additional two pounds seems like a lot for some heating pipes. I'm, I'm gonna be interested to see what the teardowns reveal about that additional weight. It's also important to note that the M1 Ultra Max can be configured with a maximum of 128 gigabytes of memory, while the M1 Max version is capped at 64 gigabytes. So if you know you need 120 gigabytes of memory, and if you're that person, hey, I'd love to meet you and find out what you do, but uh, the Ultra version is the only one that can get 128 gigabytes of memory, and it will cost you an additional $800. In fact, if you max out the studio, you'll be spending $8,000 for an eight terabyte drive, an M1 Ultra chip with 64 GPU cores and 128 gigabytes of memory. And yes, $8,000 is expensive. I'm not claiming it's not, but again, when you look at the Mac Pro configurations and you spec that out similarly, this thing, again on paper, is a good value. I'm just gonna keep saying it over and over again. I know most people watching this video are, don't even need that spec but when you just look at the performance per dollar on these machines, they are good values. Okay, let me address a few of the common questions I got. Uh, first of all, I think a lot of you are wondering if the M1 Ultra is worth it, and hey, listen, at this point, I'm gonna be honest, I just don't know. Apple made a lot of claims about the performance of this machine, and again, it sounds like a really impressive chip on paper, but I think I'll have to wait to get my hands on one before I can answer this question. The only thing I can say is, if you thought the M1 Max on the MacBook Pro wouldn't be enough for your needs, I guess you're in the market for an M1 Ultra. But if you're like me and you probably can't even utilize the max performance out of an M1 Max, well, the additional money you're spending on these upgrades probably aren't worth it. Now I know a lot of people are looking for a build recommendation, what I would recommend. And honestly, I'm gonna recommend the base model with just one upgrade for most people, and that would be the $200 add-on for the one terabyte of storage. There's gonna be people who need more. If you need 64 gigabytes of memory, add that upgrade. If you need the extra GPU on the M1 Max chip, add that upgrade. But for most people watching this video, I think that studio, the $2,200 model with one terabyte of storage, I think that's probably the model to get at this point from a performance or a value perspective. Uh, I'm hesitant to make an M1 Ultra build recommendation because we really don't know that much about the chip, but I'll try. Uh, so for the M1 Ultra, I think here's where I would make some more recommendations. Obviously you probably have a bit more money if you're going for the Ultra and you probably want max performance. So for this, I would probably recommend the starting chip. I feel like a thousand dollars for a the extra GPU cores are not gonna be worth it for most people. But for memory, it starts at 64 gigabytes. I think here is a distinction of where if you know you need more memory, just get the one extra 128, right? You can't replace it later. And then for the storage, um, this is where I'd actually make a different recommendation. If you are in the market for an ultra machine, I think you want this to perform at its best level. So I would actually recommend the four terabytes of storage so you get those really fast peak SSD speeds. That's the recommendation I'm making for the M1 Ultra build. Um, again, I would say the base chip, 64 or 128 gigabytes of memory, depending on your needs, you gotta, you gotta figure that out yourself. But then I would probably recommend the four terabytes of storage so you get those faster storage speeds if they are like the MacBook Pro. Okay, what about other options? Because I think there's two computers you're probably looking at right now. One of them is probably the MacBook Pro and the other is probably something even cheaper, the Mac Mini. Now one disadvantage with the Mac Studio is it's just a box. It doesn't come with a display and the ideal display you'd probably wanna pair it with is an additional $1,600. It also doesn't come with a keyboard or a mouse. The MacBook Pro comes with a display, and a really good one at that, and a built-in keyboard and trackpad. So right out of the box, it is a much easier setup to use, and if you want to use it as a portable machine, obviously I think the MacBook Pro is the way to go. However, if you don't care about portability or you were planning to use your MacBook Pro connected to an external display in like clamshell mode, I, I see a lot of people doing that all the time. They buy a MacBook, portable MacBook and then they just spend all their time using it in a clamshell mode connected to a display. I would just say go for the Mac Studio instead if that sounds like you. At the $2,000 price point, you're getting a much better machine. You're getting 32 gigabytes of starting memory compared to 16 gigabytes and you're getting the M1 Max by default instead of the M1 Pro. So if you're just gonna use this as a desktop or that's your primary use like 
the Mac Studio represents a better value for performance per dollar. And it's even better if you already have a display you like and a keyboard and mouse to save even more money. Now, what about the Mac Mini? Well, I think this is also an attractive option for a large number of users because the Mini is a much cheaper computer at $699. Granted, it comes with a regular M1 chip, but I think you'd be surprised just how competent and powerful that processor is. And if you don't need the sheer processing power of the Mac Studio, and you don't need specs that go beyond 16 gigabytes of memory or two terabytes of internal storage, I think the M1 Mac Mini is still probably the best overall value for a Mac desktop for a performance per dollar standpoint. So if you're depressed about the Mac Studio's pricing, take another look at the M1 Mac Mini and see if that can work for you. But avoid the Intel version at all costs. That thing is just outrageously overpriced at this point. And I'm surprised Apple didn't discontinue it like they did with the 27 inch Intel iMac. As for other Macs, well, I'd steer clear of any other Intel Mac which I guess is the Mac Pro at this point, especially because Apple said that the Mac Pro was the last Mac left to go to complete the transition, which means that this Mac is still coming before the end of 2022. So if you think you need even more power than the Mac Studio, again, I think I said it before with the RAM, I'd love to meet this type of person, but if that's you, don't go get the Intel Mac Pro. It's not even more powerful than the Mac Studio at this point. And uh, a new Mac Pro is coming sometime probably soon. I would expect to see this at WWDC and then maybe see it shipped by the end of this year for an Apple Silicon Mac Pro. Okay, so far this is the best advice I can give you on the Mac Studio right now. Obviously for more detailed information on the base model and the M1 Ultra model, make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more videos because we're going to be doing a lot of tests on March 18th and learn even more about Apple's new Mac Studio and also the Studio Display. So if you found this video helpful and informative, I really hope you did. That's what I always try and aim with these videos. Make sure you hit the like button. And as always, thank you so much for watching. It's an exciting time, and hopefully I see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.